spoken to. My Sit down. <laughs> there you go. Good boy. Good boy. Get, get, get him a, a baby seat. Uh, we'd like to welcome everybody here for Larry's retirement slash roast. You're going to hear things tonight that probably are, are they're all true, even though we probably em embellish them a little bit. But when we're talking, we're telling the truth. So, and then we're going to, we're going to start out with uh, Local 2968, giving them a little speech and things like that. Then uh, from there, we're going to kind of open forum for anybody who wants to come up and say how much they love him and things like that. And how glad he's going to uh, uh, Washington, different things like that. And then I'll finish up at the very end. So, you guys go. Well, on behalf of Local 2968 and Defensible Fire Protection District, we'd like to hand over this uh, beautiful ass, which is uh, well deserved. <laughs> 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 English is my second language. <laughs> <laughs> Speak from your heart. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to turn over this beautiful ads to Battalion Chief Carter, who uh, worked his way up the ranks as uh, firefighter, blue shirt, lieutenant, um, battalion chief, and uh, is now moving on to bigger and better things. So. BC Park, it's my honor to hand this over to you. Gold chip, come on up. Gold chip, come on up. Thanks, Nap. Uh, 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 member of Ghost Ship along with my guys here was staying. Yes, talk louder. Rick, speak up. Turn off your hearing <laughs> okay, as members of Go Ship, I'm not retiring. I got eight more years, so I'm staying. <laughs> we got some for Larry. You know, we all pitched in, and you know, hate to see him go, but you know, he's getting a good opportunity, big challenge because I talked to him about a little bit. I said, anytime you need help from me, because he's going to be an administrator now, so you know, and I've done it for a while too. So, like, you know, anytime you need help from me, and uh, APC go, Larry, but uh, you know, you know, you know. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Tell the real story. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. A real guy tells the story. Tell the fan story. Right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Larry, I mean, he, you know, he's been around with us for a long time, you know, and uh, uh, he's a good guy, real nice guy to work with. And uh, I'll tell one story. Uh, that uh, kind of got the department, you know, known for something. Uh, Larry, all of a sudden, uh, one day, uh, me and a couple other chiefs walk in the firehouse and there's golf balls everywhere, you know. And we're going like, the heck, who took up golfing, you know. So we started asking around, nobody wants to say where the golf balls came from. Well, all of a sudden, one of the guys says, yeah, the golf ball came from Larry. And we're going, for what? And he says, well, that's what our new ventilation tools. And I go like, really? I go, so, I go, how does this work, you know? And he goes, well, you take them, you throw them at the windows, and you break the windows. <laughs> so, needless to say, there were so many golf balls around, our chief got kind of teed off. <laughs> So the 
pop-off slowly disappeared, you know, and I don't think there's any left around there. We've been hearing that story for years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you're pretty well known for over there. So. Now the guys in Bensonville, to have golf balls on their possession is not uncommon because we got the golf course right next to us. Right, right. So we pick up yeah. balls that hit our cars almost every day. Right. There was no, <laughs> yeah, there was no golf courses. In the no, not, not at all. But, uh, yeah, congratulations, Blair. <laughs> Thank you very I much. I wish I was in your place, but uh, <laughs> it was a pleasure and pleasure being a firefighter with you. Thanks, Dan. guys who worked with him for all those years, I know it was trauma, but uh, <coughs> Minnow, Mikey, you want to say anything? Bad door? Mike's got a huge speech set up. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's got diarrhea, but that's a little <laughs> Come on, Mikey. <coughs> Railroaded. Yeah. I, uh, I worked with with Larry for a while, but I mean, not on this show, so I don't have a bunch of stories. <laughs> uh, just the last year, and so I enjoyed working with the last year, training the new guys, had a good time with them, and uh, wish you back the best of luck. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Okay, Larry, we'll have you have a seat. <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. English is my second language too. <laughs> well, as you know, at least from my perspective, it, it, it's wonderful to have someone that you've served with, that have served with you, move on to a chief's position. That's actually for me as a chief one of the most gratifying things because that says obviously Larry's very smart and all the bad things I did he learned from so now he knows to do the right thing. <laughs> but it, it really is, it, 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 it is good because it's like having a, a, your kid grow up and things like that. I claimed him on my taxes many times. <laughs> uh, you know, it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. But at this time, a lot of people are sad. Not for Larry, we're happy, all things. Battalion Chief, Johnson is the happiest. <laughs> Charlie, I'll send you the address. Yeah. Check everybody. No, 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 dear. Cash. 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 You know, FedEx or anything like that. So I think Charlie's the happiest. But but now we've also seen some movement working up. We've got Jimmy. He's really happy. He's now taking times on gold ship. The house is available. Parties are planned. He works very reasonable as far as his rate. He just asked that you clean up afterwards the beer bottles, the wine bottles, and the sheets. You'll be just fine. So Jimmy's really happy. But at the same time, yeah, the guys in the back going, yeah, the baby. Uh, Jimmy and the same thing has come up from the first pictures of seeing Jimmy holding, uh, Larry holding him and things like that, to now we've seen him from an EMTA to a paramedic to a firefighter and now he's a professional firefighter with Orland Fire Protection District. So a lot of that's due to you guys, not him, helping him <laughs> become what he did. So Jimmy, I know you're happy. Congratulations, and you're going to do wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jim's playing it really good. <coughs> like, oh, Dad, I'm really sorry you're going. <laughs> you know, all I know is he's got the alarm set for four o'clock in the morning, and, and he's saying, you know, this is Washington time now. Get out of here, guys. <laughs> but uh, Larry, Larry's been here 28 years. And as Rick said, you can always call me if you need help and different things like that. Everybody will always know where Larry's at. Just look on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. That's what you do. You can communicate. You can message him. But uh, Larry's done an exceptional job. He's come up. Uh, he's done a lot for us. He's helped with the morale, he's helped with training, 
And thank God he's leaving. I mean, now he's leaving. <laughs> but uh, going on for a chief level. Now, as you know, there's a lot of carcinogens out there. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't want stuff that was in Illinois to be moved to Washington. <laughs> uh, so, the guy who really took his place in New Proby, Ben Smith, uh, was asked to clean it. He polished so now, his helmet? He polished his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, <laughs> Tommy, we won't say what you polished. <laughs> but it's going to be nice to have a resource and another chief from our clan that's going to be up in Washington. So congratulations, chief. <laughs> the other thing is starting traditions. And uh, you guys have come a long way from when I met you 10 years ago. Yeah, no doubt. You guys have flourished. You all have come together, and I'm proud of each and every one of you for what you've done, for what you proved that you could do for all this time. And uh, so, one of the traditions we're starting is as people retire, uh, they've got some never forget challenge coin. So part of it I hope that it sits for me, so you, you got to retire to get one. Later, big boy. <laughs> so, uh, it's from 9-11, I think you know the fire service changed after 9-11. And God bless you guys, since 05, you've changed tremendously. You're an awesome group of people, and I'm very proud of you. So, but Larry, to take this up to Washington, a challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, have a seat. Larry doesn't, Larry had this, but this is kind of a surprise. Uh, if you know, a few years ago, I think you read about us for oh. Katrina, uh, <laughs> that we were the only ones that were called back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, let's talk about hitting the news. Uh, yeah, we couldn't get any lower than that. But uh, with that, at that time, there were medals of honor given to the people who went down. And unfortunately, Ron has left, but we now have new medals. So what I'd like at this point, is he's going to be real surprised, Tom Wozak, or I'm sorry, Chief Wozak, could you come up here? Uh, what this is, Tommy, it says uh, for you all who shall see the, the... You went to Katrina and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we time. We we time. Time. yeah, what stayed there? Yeah, yeah we, we, stayed, yeah, we stayed can't go there. back. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> Tommy. Oh but here, as far as the Humanitarian Service Award for Hurricane Katrina, Louisiana response and relief effort to Tom Wazak. Wow. Here you go. Here is the new medallion. It's now the first as far as from Mavis 20. It's the first humanitarian award. Very nice. So congratulations, Tom. Thank you. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, Tom, he said, thanks for talking to me. And Mom was real happy. What was it, a new couch you got out of it? Uh, you know, it was two weeks of peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was two weeks of peace and quiet. Tom loved it. 
It was great. It's the most work I've ever seen him do. And guess what? He smiled a lot. Well, yeah. Well, we won't go that far. He's the only guy I know that in the in in the tent that we all slept in that he loved it. Ah, no, that was you. So well. So uh, with this. I think at this point uh, we could roast you and things like that, Larry, but we've got a lot of respect for you. So congratulations, Chief, and it's your turn to talk. to put up on your uh, wall. Oh, thank you very much. So you remember something yes. about me? <laughs> <laughs> and I remember uh, a couple of weeks ago when um, I was helping Nevin with the fire academy class over in Stickney. We were doing some live fire, fir uh, some live uh, ferns. I saw that they had a patch case up in their uh, hallway showing where a lot of the alumni have gone. So I've got a patch uh, for Stickney to put up in the case. And uh, I'm going to give it to Josh. Make sure that that makes it into the case. Okay. Back in the summer of 1984, I bet some of you firemen weren't even uh, born yet. <laughs> I saw an advertisement in the uh, Chicago Tribune that Bensonville was uh, testing for firemen. So. I asked my dad about it. He thought it was a pretty good profession. So what the heck, I went and I took the, uh, the test in Bensonville. I did the written, I did the agility. The agility was all over and some of you might remember this, but um, somebody had stolen my gym shoes <laughs> out of the station. So I had to call up Denise, who was my girlfriend at the time and say, come on and bring me another pair of shoes because I don't have my keys for the car. I can't get home. So. That was our introduction to Bensonville, and that was the summer of 84. <laughs> Things got better, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, somebody brought him back a couple of days later. <laughs> then the uh, last week of um, January 1985, uh, Fire Chief Willie Shoppy, who was here earlier, unfortunately I think he had to leave, gave me a call and said, hey, kid, we got a job opening, you want it? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I did. I said, I don't know. So he said, okay, today's Monday. Be in my office after lunch on Thursday and give me an answer one way or the other. So between Monday and Thursday, I went to talk to my dad's best friend, who was Frank Malina. The, uh, he was a deputy chief in Oak Park at the time. I said, Frank, tell me, do I want this as a profession? And he just about died when I asked him. He said, absolutely, absolutely, go for it. So I did. I went and I met with Chief Shoppy, and 28 years later, and one month, we're standing here today, and I had one awesome career in Bensonville. So, first off, I'd like to thank the veterans or the retirees that are here tonight. Thanks for coming out. I worked with a great group of guys for between 25 and 28 years here on the job. You guys <coughs> taught me immensely. You guys taught me a lot. After a bunch of those guys retired, we got a new group of guys, and those guys are just as awesome. You guys have... I was just going to say you guys brought some great enthusiasm to the fire station. You guys brought some great ideas. You guys just, just brought a real good feeling to the firehouse. And it was a whole different firehouse now, going from the youngest guy in the station for many, many years to being one of the elders. So I want to thank all you young guys for being here and thank you for everything that you guys have given me during my years. A lot of you know that uh, a year after I got the job in Bensonville, I went on as a paid on call in Stickney. 
And I can tell you, I learned one hell of a lot from you guys. There's, there's some great firemen and officers, chief officers and chiefs sitting at this table that I learned a lot from over the years. And I thank you guys immensely for everything that you guys have given me over the time. I don't think I, w or I know I wouldn't have gotten this chief's position if I didn't have that volunteer paid on call experience from being in Stickney all those years. So thank you very much. Um, I want to thank Chief Spain for everything that he's done. Um, he has encouraged his officers to excel and to move on, and I really appreciate that a lot. It's been very, uh, he's been very, very helpful to all of his members of the department, and I think especially I've taken a lot of his advice to heart and used it. I like to thank my son Jim. When Jim was 13 years old, he came to Denise and I and said he wanted to be a fireman. Will you guys help me? And these past 11 years, he has put his whole heart and effort into becoming a fireman. And what that's done is that's turned dinner time and evening time and every time at the house into fire talk for the last 10 years. Uh, if you don't have a, have, a, you have a young kid who's interested in being a fireman, you don't want you don't know what it's like to talk about the firehouse 24-7. <laughs> but we did, and he kept my spirits up when things weren't the best in Bensonville, and he got us through that period, and I really enjoyed talking about the fire service with Jim. It's been a heck of an experience watching him, as Chief Spain said, going from a young boy who isn't in the service to actually getting his job in the service. And I wish you luck, Jim. Thank you. Aww. Lastly, I'd like to thank my wife, Denise. You had no idea what you were in for when you <laughs> became a, a fireman's wife. Um, yeah, there were those times when I left the house in the middle of dinner, in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yes, you had no idea what you were in for, but you have turned, it turned into a perfect fireman's wife, and you have let me pursue my dreams, you have let me get all the education I needed, go to all the classes I wanted, and I appreciate you giving me all that freedom. So thank you very much. <laughs> Lastly, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming tonight. Uh, let's have a good time, tell some more stories, and, and have a couple of more drinks. Thank you very much. Looking forward to starting out my career with a dirty helmet. It really was. You're a chief now. Yeah. It was a good thing for me. That's why I needed the dirt to be already on it. So thanks. Oh, dude. My husband. I hear that accent. I hear it out of the